I request to Dr. Murugan, President of IASTD AIDS, to give welcome address. Good evening, one and all, my dear friends. I welcome you all and sparing this your valuable time to attend this seminar that is a webinar. And uh, this will be very useful. And uh, uh, yes, of course, the live meeting and conferences, it cannot be replaced. But we can have the conferences once in a year or at the maximum twice in a year. But I feel, thanks to Corona, thanks to the technology, that we are able to meet over the webinar, over the uh, online meeting, and we are refreshing, we are abrushing, we are updating ourselves frequently, and we are making the people, uh, especially students, to make aware about the updates, and we are discussing. This will be very useful. We are meeting, and we are abrushing, that is refreshing our knowledge, Frequently, that is uh, very good. I think it will be useful. But sometimes it may, if, if, if anybody is not able to do, we can abstain. That is there. So that is very important. And on, uh, once again, uh, this uh, ASTINAR 4 is we are going to discuss about the HIV challenges. HIV is a complex disease. Each and every case poses difficulty and challenges. And uh, we are having today two giants in the HIV field. Dr. Mania, J.K. Mania and Dr. D.G. Saple uh, as a moderators and uh, wonderful uh, panelists are there. So it will be a feast for us. We will enjoy. And usually our webinar is attended by more than 300 people. Uh, so it will be useful for them also. And this time I welcome all, you all. And uh, let us, uh, uh, we, I, will, I, I ask the uh, chairpersons to take the proceedings. Yes. Please share the CV of I request to Dr. V. Mohan Kumar, General yes, Secretary sir. of IAS, STD, and AIDS, yes, sir, to thank introduce you, the eight persons. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Our first chair person is Professor Vikram, sir, from Nagpur. He is visiting professor of Jain MC Varda. He is in past president of our IADVL Maharashtra branch. He had more than 30 publications to his credit. The next chair person is our professor, uh, Dr. K. Venkateswaran. He hails from Chennai. He is uh, UG and PG from Madras Medical College. He is my teacher. He has more than 25 years of experience in the Institute of Venerology. He is our past president and secretary of IASTD. SAR is awarded for his services in IASTD as for award of excellence in the previous Kodagan Lastikan. Over to the chair person, sir. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, so I'm Dr. Vikrant Sahuji, I think welcome you all for this uh, session on an important topic that is HIV AIDS. I think we being a venerologist, we are usually the first person who encounters this patient of possible HIV. So it's our job to suspect and diagnose. I mean, we are very important. We can play a very important role in that. Now, of course, HIV is well under control, but it's still not out. It's still not gone totally. So we still need to be vigilant. And today for this uh, CME program, we have two great pioneers in the field of HIV, Dr. Maniar and Dr. Sapre, sir, who have done their pioneering work in uh, HIV in India. And we have, we're going to have two uh, uh, panel discussion. So let's start with first panel discussion, and that is going to be moderated by Dr. Sapre, sir. And he will be moderating the panel on diagnostic challenges of HIV and AIDS. It's a case-based discussion. So I think, yes, I invite Dr. Sapre, sir. I think you all must be aware of Dr. Sapre. I think he doesn't need any introduction here. He has done so much of original work in... Uh, uh, STD HIV. He was a professor at GT Hospital. I think now he has a lot of publication. He has got a lot of award and 
you all must have heard him so many times talking on HIV and various topics. So HIV is his favorite topic, has delivered so many lectures. He has been awarded so many times. Uh, and he is a really a giant in the field of STD HIV. So I request Dr. Sapre, sir, to take over. Yes, Dr. Sapre, sir. Thank you. Th uh, thank you, Vikrant. I think I'm just sharing my slides. Can you see my slides? No, sir, no. Okay. No, sir. No. Then I have to just, I think, leave and join again. There is some problem. Give me some few minutes. So yeah. keep your presentation open so you can find it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I have to leave and join again because it was open. I do not know what happened. So I am sure this session is going to be very useful for all those people who deal with STD and HIV, because we have a very good faculty and uh, all the panelists are all reputed senior doctors with a lot of experience in HIV. So I think it will be really useful for the uh, listeners, for the people who uh, dermatologists and venerologists who deal with such patients. So e even if I think oh, uh, we are not a special, we are not dealing with uh, HIV like uh, Sapre sir and Maniar sir, but as a venerologist, as a dermatologist, venerologist, we do come across many such situation where we have to suspect HIV. So it's a <laughs> very interesting, uh, it's going to be a very interesting session. <laughs> Sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm just one second sharing. Why it's not sharing? We were earlier able to see your slide. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. 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 Oh, How can you can you see my yes, slides? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is all bio as of your panel. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. And, sorry, uh, sorry for sorry for the some technical problem because. I think these are the problem we are facing it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vikrant, for the nice introduction. Thank you, Dr. Murugan. And thank you, Bhumesh and Astina team for giving this opportunity to moderate this session in the challenges of HIV diagnosis and the AIDS. We have very good, well-experienced panelists. First, our panelist, Dr. Ravi Saini from Amritsar, he, he, uh, his introduction, first thing I want to tell, he is the first doctor or the, he is the team who detected first patient in Punjab in 1992. With Dr. Bharti. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the team of Dr. Bharti, which is Dr. Maria. He is going to uh, be a panelist with Dr. Maria session. And since then he is practicing. So he's very much interested in HIV and AIDS. So we can learn a lot of things from him. We have got our second panelist, Dr. Shiva Aramareddy. He's a professor of DVL Baskar Medical College, Hyderabad, and professor of DVL Farmani Gandhi Medical College, Secunderabad. Next is Dr. Manju Bala. Madam is a very senior microbiologist. You just mention any organization. She is there as an advisor, as a scientific advisor. And she has got enough experience about the diagnosis, the problem of diagnosis HIV. So all questions will go to Madam about the diagnosis of HIV. Our next panel is Dr. Partha Sardi. He, he, he is a present affiliate to, uh, he is a deputy director, accelerator project of Telangana, led by the Johns Hopkins University. And his area of interest is very important that community-based intervention and digital intervention with STA surveillance. So he is very much needed for the prevention aspect. And our next panelist, Dr. Devdeep Mitra, who has passed from AFMC Pune. He has more uh, 70 number of publication, 100 more and more than 100 for the presentation. And his area of interest is, I think, is a quiz master and vitiligo surgery. With this, I think we'll start our, 
panel discussion. I think first questions for all panelists, but I would like to say that one of the panelists should answer, but I'll ask Madam only, how do we confirm diagnosis of HIV? Because this is a big problem. Uh, so Madam, can, can you elaborate on this? Uh, yes, Dr. Sakle. Good evening, everyone. So how we go about the diagnosis of HIV, when we are talking about it can be either HIV-1 or HIV-2. So one has to follow net. Uh, I'm audible. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, audible. So one has to follow NACO policy when we are uh, talking about the diagnosis of HIV. So countrywide it is being followed. And in all the ICTCs, there are two, three rapid tests, which are of different principles, they are available. And the specifications, they are always designed by NACO. And according to that, the kits are procured by different states. So first it is having 100% sensitivity and more than 98% specificity. And if the test comes positive, then the second and third test, they are done. And it depends upon that whether the patient is asymptomatic or symptomatic. If patient is symptomatic, then strategy 2B is followed. That if first test is positive, and if second test is positive, the patient is declared as positive. But if second test is negative, then the third test is carried out. And if third test is positive, but the second test it was negative, then it is known as it is called as indeterminate. And then the sample is taken after two to four weeks again, and repeat test is done to confirm the infection. And for diagnosis, if the sample still remains indeterminate, then the sample is sent to SRL for diagnosis, for confirmation. All the ICTCs in India, they are linked to state reference labs. And all the state reference labs, they are linked to national reference labs. There are 13 NRLs across India and one Apex lab at Nari. These 13 NRLs, they are linked to Apex lab at Nari. So if the sample is indeterminate, then the sample is sent to SRL for confirmation. And if sample still remains indeterminate at SRL, then it is sent to NRL, linked NRL for confirmation. And NRL, they do the Western blot test for confirmation. They do ELISA, first ELISA followed by Western blot for confirmation. And depending upon that, the result is confirmed. Like recently we came across one case now, madam, was... I think, madam, I think we'll go. Yeah, uh, well, thank you for the right information and the proper information, which is necessary, as madam has mentioned. But this is just see how, how we used to diagnose before. I'm talking about the clinicians, asymptomatic. I'm talking about the long back, that double ELISA used to do it in a symptomatic patient, single ELISA, and pediatrics. We used to do ELISA with either P24 or RT-PCR. That was your practice initially. But what Madam says, this is the chart that you do the first stage, second stage. Madam has given you uh, uh, right information. And then accordingly. So, now it ahead. is rapid test. Dr. Saple, yeah. that is what yeah. I would like to emphasize. Yeah. As per NACO policy, not ELISA. It is only rapid test by three. Yeah, different yeah, this is a rapid test. Yes, correct. By three madam. different principles. Correct, correct. No, initially, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's then, correct. Yeah, correct. Then for confirmation of HIV2, because if the sample is coming as, because at ICTC, there are, when we are talking about the second or third rapid test, there can be one kit or there can be two kits which differentiate between the HIV1 and 2. If the ICTC is having two kits which are able to differentiate that it is HIV-2, they are able to pinpoint that it is HIV-2, then the diagnosis is confirmed as HIV-2 and patient is started on ART for HIV-2. But if at ICTC they are having only one kit which differentiates between the HIV-1 and HIV-2, then the sample is sent to SRN for confirmation. Then they do another, they do testing by another kit which differentiates between the HIV-1 and HIV-2. And if the test is positive by this rapid test, it is again declared as HIV-2. But if it is not clear by this rapid test, 
then western blot test is done for confirmation because there are different kind of western blot available which different which uh, can diagnose hiv1 and which can diagnose hiv2 and the final confirmation is by apex lab for hiv2 okay whenever you, there is any discordance yeah. yeah thank you madam see but now with the availability of the fourth generation with the hiv1 say yeah. Yeah, correct. You you can differentiate HIV no HIV two with yes. the HIV, if the HIV one antibody is a positive, you can yeah. initiate the care. HIV two is positive, you can initiate the care. But what is important the indeterminate where you have to go for the viral load. But uh, viral load we will discuss that indeterminate the later. So this is the way you can do. So this is one of the patient because we are going by the patient. Why this patient? About 20 years, male patient was about, uh, he, 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 he was dying. Uh, in fact, he was HIV positive by the rapid kids, uh, and the patient was reported to ART center, where the patient has started on antiretroviral therapy. That is 2016. But later on, if you see, all the time his CD4 count was done and CD4 count was within the normal limit. But in 21, he got married. Again, he went for HIV test and the HIV test came. As the HIV ELISA Western blood test was done and viral done was done, viral load was not detected. Less. And all these Take tests less. were negative. Yeah, this is one of the no, case. Uh, yeah, so, yeah no, we don't do. I think some can, okay, yeah. can you mute? Please mute yourself. Mute yourself, please. Srinivas asked somebody to, yeah. yeah. So this is a, another case. This is the case she wanted to migrate to Canada because her, uh, her son wanted that mother should join. But then the patient was declared positive for ELISA test, sorry, a rapid test. And these, these are the tests where this HIV 1 and 2 was borderline. Again, this uh, reactive. So she was refused migration. That was in December 2006. That is the first December. On 21 December, again, results are reactive and the reactive both. So she was not allowed to go. But in month of February, she came to me. This is my problem. We got Western broad test. Western broad, if you see, all it is negative. Then again, 14th May, we repeated it was negative. And in, two, uh, in the 26th May, still the sample shows that reactive in the gray zone. Yeah. But then in August 2007, it was non-reactive. So, madam, these are the two cases. Of course, this was negative. We wrote and she could migrate to Canada. So, these are the two cases. In fact, there are many cases like this. So, uh, can you elaborate on these cases or these other tests? Uh, first case which yeah. you talked about, that case was positive in 2016, you said. Yes. And in 20, uh, it, it, patient was on ART. Yeah. Patient was on ART and his CD count, count was almost stable during this period. That is what you talked yes, about. Yes, correct, correct. Yes, but when he got himself tested in 2021, because they were planning a child, then the patient was negative. Can you tell me? Uh, but uh, if he went to any government center, if he went to any ICTC, what were the results? No, that we do not remember. But this is the, I think, madam, this is the patient you, you are saying this patient, no? No, that is what yeah. I, if yeah. you are talking about this same patient, yeah. then this patient yeah, yeah. went to ICTC, you results yeah. which you are talking about, private lab results, they were negative. Yeah. Yeah. That, is, that is a rapid test, ELISA, Western blot, it was negative. But when this test, uh, samples went to uh, uh, when this person went to ICTC in 2021. Then again at ICTC it was negative. But then the ART referred this case because patient was on ART. ART referred this case to SRL for confirmation. And in SRL when the sample was taken, they did three tests on the same sample. 
and the test was one test was positive one rapid test was positive and two rapid tests they were negative right so the sample yes. yeah then then the sample was sent to nrl for confirmation national reference laboratory in the national reference laboratory this patient was positive by one rapid test and positive by one elisa test because the patient was positive by one rapid test one elisa test at nrl and by one rapid test at srl and negative by two rapid test at srl so the patient was indeterminate then the sample was sent to apex lab for confirmation apex lab did the western yeah, blot thank, thank, thank you madam the message i want to we want to give here no this no. rap yeah but i think so there are many many questions like are there i will like Pardon? to emphasize on one thing here because the patient was indeterminate in 2021 and patient yeah, i'm coming ARP. madam i'm coming to that that's yes. why i'm trying to yeah so the message here see 1993 dr maniari is there we uh, see we used to do a lot of tests they used to come positive but in 98 97 we realized they were negative but we used to call them positive they were put on uh, this must have happened in the many cases now the poor generation elisa is available so now there are less chances of making mistakes but the, this mistake is to do previously but this can happen as madam said with the rapid test so you have to be careful so now will coming the next question madam about the indeterminate results what are the conditions where you get indeterminate results the results can be indeterminate like if we take this case that the patient was on art and if we do otherwise as per nacco policy there is no need of doing the again hiv testing even if they are getting married or if they are getting uh, uh, planning for baby that is that is why it led to confusion in this case because if patient is on art it is a well known fact that there can be decline in antibodies there can be suppression of antibody response and there can be suppression of viral load because patient is on art and there are biological mechanisms behind this that the anti that the antibody to envelop antigen and to other antigens they decline if patient is on prolonged art and in this case patient was on art for 5 years so it is a well known fact and there are many publications also worldwide that they have done the comparison of patients those are on, those who are on art and those who are art naive and it has been seen that the sensitivity of these rapid test it may decline from 2 to 5% if patient is on art so that is why this explains that why this patient was indeterminate in 2021 so he will be still considered as hiv positive and he will still be guided that how they should plan the baby and then how they should be taking the precautions so dr saini yes so ravi what are the condition we get indeterminate results yeah and if we get indeterminate results how we are going to work on it conditions are or you say you say false positive but yeah because many time during serial conversion late stage of hiv infection cross reaction infection oh, no. in the host strain we may get the indeterminate results yes. but madam if anybody comes with the indeterminate you already mentioned but uh, ravi would like to add if any patient come with the indeterminate how you are going to approach otherwise i'll go to next no no me. same as madam yeah. has told i will i will counsel the patient and yeah. i will say that you are definitely a child positive and you and if you are planning for the child you have have to take the same precautions as an hiv positive person that is there so usually these are the patient usually we wait for just now i i showed that patient they came in month of december but by august everything was negative so we have to wait and we have to repeat sometimes yes. it takes even 6 months that's how we can yeah so we'll yes. ask yes. next question to dr mitra what are the conditions where you get the false positive test uh, sir two very important and common things which were there earlier one is which we generally don't discuss is the patient's blood being mismatched 
that happens most likely in the blood banks where there are many samples. That is one thing where we get, these are much more common reasons. Then the other thing is the kit is faulty because we had an entire batch of kit in which the kit was faulty where we got false positives. A similar thing, for example, happens in, for example, a urine grav index test, the entire, we subjected about 10 male patients, all patients had a positive urine grav index. Similarly, here also we had that entire batch of HIV which gave positive results irrespective of the status of the patient. So these are much more commoner than the other set of uh, subsets where we get the false positives. False positives may be an advanced disease, infections. These are very, very rare, specifically with the fourth generation tests. But I strongly feel that the laboratory or the other human errors are much more prevalent, which should be countered or which should be rechecked in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mitra. This is a very good information. In fact, these are the practical information we wanted. There are many conditions like early laboratory technique, as children's born, multiparous women, connected tissue. And there but are, they, of course, they, but yeah. they are very, very rare, sir. We hardly yeah, I, I entirely agree. That's why I appreciated your hands on experience. Yeah, yes. because but we have to keep sometimes in mind in you know, the leprosy. This can Even happen in the presence of rheumatoid, uh, disease, yeah, autoimmune hepatitis, yeah, uh, yeah. autoimmune hepatitis, uh, multiple myeloma. These can also cause, yeah, connective uh, tissue disease. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so we'll go for the next case. This is a 44-year-old male presented with the uh, in, in to, to, uh, 2007 CD4 not increasing. He was HIV positive. History of tuberculosis about 16 months back. He had herpes zosters. He was on depo to 3TC and nevirapine. This is for Dr. Reddy. See, his CD4 counts was not increasing. His virus load was less than 50. And once it was less than 176, that that time we used to call less than 400 is undetectable. Yeah, so ca can you tell me why this was happening? Because see, there is history of tuberculosis, history of herpes zoster, but his CD4 count was not rising in spite of patient was on DPOT, TTC and neurofine. Yeah. We, we, many times you get the patient whose CD4s are not on the rise in spite of antiretroviral. Dr. Reddy, are you there? Uh, Dr. Parth, are they ready? Yeah, yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. So basically, uh, this is the one of the practical problem what we face with the uh, uh, ART management the discordance between uh, viral load testing and uh, uh, CD4 uh, counter. Uh, so many of the times, uh, since in, in a programmatic application, um, since, one second, sir. Sorry, some technical snack here, yeah. See, practically, we face this very often in a clinical uh, practice, both in government side as well as in a uh, 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 clinical setting. So what we uh, now decided to is to follow the viral load rather than CD4 count. So in practical implication, follow the viral load rather than CD4 count. But rather, we see, want to explain the discordance between the CD4 count and viral load. There are lots of uh, uh, causes. One, the timing of testing. When we are doing the test, are we doing uh, synchronously or at different points of time? Second thing, what are the other drugs like patients are taking? For example, if a patient is taking some kind of immunosuppressants or those things like methotrexate, etc., that also may be the cause for uh, reduced lymphocyte production and causing uh, the uh, lymphocytopenia, again, indirectly affecting the CD4 count. And also other few infections of bone marrow that also may could cause uh, theoretically uh, the reduced production of uh, the B cells. And also uh, we should not forget like HIV is not just an immune suppression, it is also immune dysregulation. Very often we uh, fail to understand right. that. So it is not just the disease of uh, T cell or anything, it is also entire the memory cell, B cell, T cell, every clone of cells are affected. So that immune dysregulation also, the degree of dysregulation also causes this kind of discordance between uh, these two testing. And finally, as uh, one of our panelists rightly mentioned, 
we should have also the pre analytic analytic and post analytic causes wherever we analyze the laboratory test we should also consider the errors right from the sample collection to testing the testing error as well as the error uh, the laboratory to the uh, till the sample reaches the uh, client so these are all some of the common uh, uh, research for discarders but again i would like to reiterate for the uh, interest of our senior residents uh, let us not uh, kind of get confused all these things practically although theoretically there are lots of implications that practically we need to follow the viral load count which is the gold standard for monitoring the ther therapy of the individual thank you sir i agree with you dr reddy that i remember we had a meeting in 98 in washington one of the doctor he said what is important is a viral load estimation not the cd4 unless in the patient is falling sick cd4 has got hardly any importance but this sometimes the patient is HIV-2, the CD4 count do not, there are many reasons, as you said, but one of the causes is HIV-2. This patient, he, he was on D4, T3, 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 and F over range. Yeah. So we'll what about the, the next drug resistance? Yeah. Pardon? Drug resistance can be there. So we'll go for the next question to Dr. Parth Sardi. What are the basic tests you do whenever any patient comes to your clinic, patient is asymptomatic, what are the basic tests you would like to do? Uh, Dr. Parsardi. Uh, can you please repeat the question, sir? Patient coming yeah, What are the basic tests? Any patient comes to your clinic as a HIV positive, how do you plan your test for the long-term planning? All right, sir. Yeah, great. So first of all, confirm the test results, sir. If it is just a simple uh, rapid test, we should not do uh, go for it. Confirm the laboratory test as per the national standards. Second thing, uh, we should not forget the patient education. Uh, like we need to ensure like patient and uh, a couple of his family members have internalized the test result. So what does it mean HIV to their life? And what does it mean the treatment of ART or whatever, whatsoever opportunistic infection and their lifestyle management. So unless we focus on their lifestyle as well as uh, in, engage some treatment buddies, uh, whatever the quality and uh, the uh, strength of regimen we are going to give doesn't matter. It will not be uh, fruitful. Apart from that, what we need to do before initiating our ART or at the time of uh, first consultation is Scope for any prophylaxis, like for example, basic co trimoxazole prophylaxis. No, Second, no, no, uh, uh, ruling out uh, uh, tuberculosis. Which is we, the most we, we want what are the basic tests you would like to do it? Okay, any, any, so basic anyway, test, any, any ruling any, out any, tuberculosis. Yeah, any patient comes of HIV to your clinic is my suggestion over the last 30 years because always any patient comes to your clinic, you have to rule out tuberculosis in our country. That is the first thing, try to, from their signs, symptoms. Then, of course, other tests, we have to get it done, like a VD, uh, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, VDRL, for to rule out the underlying OI, for monitoring ARV, these are the test, battery of tests are required. If you are going to plan, of course, now we have to start ART as early as possible, and for prognostic persons mm -hmm. for CD4, virus load, and in our practice, we get a genotyping if the patient can afford. So Dr. Parsardi, you would like to add anything more in that? Uh, no, sir, I'm perfect with it. But again, uh, the thing here is, uh, we should not forget what are all the symptoms the patient is reporting to and the, our clinical examination. So based on- Yes, the correct. Oh, that's why as asymptomatic patient comes to your clinic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So th these are the tests are required. This is the, another patient, Dr. Saini. This is yes. one of the uh, one of the patients. He came. His CD4 count was 410, but after starting ART, his CD4 count become 343 after okay. six six months. Okay. So the patient asked doctor, "What? How? Why my CD4 count is going down?" whether I'm going down or is okay. That is a question was asked to me. Yeah. So viral load was not done? No, viral load was not done. Only CD4 count was done. Yeah. You know, I don't think uh, you should uh, change the regime so early. You should wait and 
another six months or so. And you should, you should also see the any comorbidity in that patient, his diet, uh, he is, is, uh, we should rule out any hidden tuberculosis or any enteric hepatitis C, B, and other sugar and other any. Yeah, comorbidity, any... correct. That's right. Yeah. That is so, very important. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Thank you, Dr. Ravi. Uh, I entirely agree. You have to, uh, we have to look for any underlying opportunity infections, comorbidity. But this patient was asymptomatic. That's why I asked these questions of what is happening. So the mm. message here I want to give, if you see, he, his WBC count is 6,700. That time his CD4 count was 410. And next time after six months we did, his WBC count is 5,500. So CD4 count is 343. The message here I want to give, but if you see the percentage is same, 24.4, mm. 24. So what is important in such situation, the percentage of CD4 count is very important. In fact, in the pediatric, because the WBC count is variable, the percentage is very important. So many times, like the patients on, on chemotherapy, percentage remain the same, but CD4 count goes down. So these are the conditions where the CD4 percentage is very useful. So such situation, we, are, we go by the CD4 percentage more than the CD4 count. Yes. The next questions will go to Dr. Reddy again. This is the RVD patient, patient with the, uh, he, he is present with the multiple vesicle, these patients, and it comes to your clinic. How do you diagnose? Or how, of course, we clinically suspect uh, herpes. So how you confirm this herpes? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Reddy. I think he's not available. Then I'll go to Dr. Mitra. Uh, sir, uh, so we, we are talking about genital herpes because I'm not. Yes, yes, clear. correct. Okay. Because that is a very common. Absolutely. Viral infection is in HIV, no? Yeah. Yes, sir. So basically it's one, it's clinical. At my dispensation, the easiest test which I get to do is the HSV1 and 2 IgG, IgM. Even despite, even if it comes positive, negative, irrespective, sir, I'll have to start him on acyclovir. There's no two ways about it. Even with the minutest of suspicion, any kind of genital lesion in a HIV positive, if it is not proved to be anything syphilis uh, or uh, which is not definite, there is some iota of doubt, I'll still go ahead with treating with acyclovir rather than going ahead with the tests. Sir. Because the treatment is simple, it is short, and it's not going to affect the uh, HIV in the long run, but it's going to treat the herpes, irrespective of the test results. Uh, thank you very much for the right message. It's a clinical diagnosis and even the test because you said that there is a dysregulation. Because of that, many times IgG, M, uh, IgG and IgM is many times they are unreliable, unpredictable. So what you need, of course, a Zang test, but that is more, this is for the research than the routine, this thing. So what is important is a PCR. More than the antibody test, PCR is very important. Mm -hmm. So nowadays pe people are going for HSV1 PCR and HSV2 PCR. But what is important for prognostic purpose or for the prevention purpose, they suggest you must get ideally IgG of HSV1 and HSV2 with PCR. Both you have to get it done because you like to find out whether it's an acute infection, is a latent infection, or is a recurrent infection that can be made out only from this IgG uh, for HSV1, HSV2, and PCR. So this is the thing they have advocated in the, in, in the real life. So we'll go for the next question. Next question is to uh, Dr. Ravi, patient present with skin rash, yeah. This is the, this is the patient because Dr. Maniar and myself we have worked 30 years together. Hmm. This is the patient I am showing in 98. This patient was reported from Rajkot. He was diagnosed as a secondary syphilis. And the patient okay. came to GT Hospital where both of you were there. Hmm. And you can see the mark of biopsy. So mm -hmm. how you are going to proceed further? Because this patient VDRL was positive. 
and he was diagnosed as a second syphilis, but he was not responding to penidura, even three injection. He was reported to GTA hospital where both of us were working. Yeah. Of course, patients was HIV positive. Yes, correct. Yeah. All these patients are uh, RVD. Yeah. Uh, and he has already taken three doses of uh, penicillin. Yeah, penidural, correct. Yeah, benzadine penicillin. And you didn't try any other uh, other antibiotics like uh, other where, where the penicillin is contraindicated. You didn't give. No, we did not try. Yeah. <laughs> I mean to say, so you didn't try or. Uh, no, oh, uh, I did not try. Yeah, correct. Anyway, how is how is possible that two stalwarts and uh, I am asking you, you to try? <laughs> no, but penudira is a drug of choice. No, that patient is not responding. Anyway, that time this uh, sick, syphilis resistant syphilis were hardly anything. Now we have started seeing few cases. But what you says right, you have to think of the resistance one. But that yes. is nowadays we have started seeing. So thank you, Doctor Ravi. But you know, any patient come with a skin rash is very difficult. They come with a modified, is very difficult to pinpoint. So we did a biopsy and see what it turned out to be Kaposi sarcoma. Even the Kaposi sarcoma is rare okay. in our country. Yeah. Yes. So, so I thought, that the, yeah. So the message here, oh, what I want to give, that many times you are not able to diagnose clinically. We have to take help of microbiologists and pathologists, always a teamwork. So we'll go yes. for the next one. Next patient, I think this will go to Dr. Devdeep Mitra. These patients of HIV came with a severe rash all over the body with severe itching. What, what do you think of? Uh, sir, I'm not able to see the patient. Uh, yeah, okay. no, you are not able to see the slide? No, no. No, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are not no, able to see the slides, sir. No slides. Yes, sir, no slides. slides. We are imagining everything. We are seeing. Oh, Ravi, are you able to see or no? No, no, not at no. all. Sir. Not at sir, all sir. We are seeing you only, sir. <laughs> you are not seeing. But I am projecting slides. That's why. Not a single slide, Saple. No single slides? How come? No, but no. nobody told me they said slides are visible. We only show your no, no. face. Sir, we are all mesmerized by the background. That's why I gave that answer. <laughs> Only uh, faculty introduction slides, they were visible, not, not any slide after that. Yes, uh, Bala. Srinivas, yeah. please help, sir. Srinivas, sir. sir, please help. That's why Dr. Manyar said that you should, we should meet regularly. Uh, sir, close the PPT and share again, sir. Yeah, that's why. You know, that's why. See, again, I'm sharing. Can you no. see this slide or no? No, no. 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 Can you see? No, no. No, no. Put it go back. Sir, you can try showing the slides in the end. Uh, yes, yeah. Question first so that uh, we don't run short of time. Yes. Sir, so, are you having the PPT? You can try from your end. Uh -huh. No, sir, we didn't receive the PPT. You give me one uh, minute. You can go ahead with the question in, sir. You start your question, sir. In the meanwhile, people will search. Beautiful questions you are putting. He has disappeared. Just trying to re, I think. Re yeah. yeah. If I can lean a support, 
what he's asking is a HIV patient coming to you with maclopapular rash. So what will be your diagnosis and how will you manage? Am I right, Dr. Aple? He's not there, I think. Actually, he wants to that biopsy should have been done. You know. Okay. And without seeing the patient, how you can uh, say? Let's proceed. Yeah. Supply came. Let's proceed, Dr. Murugan. Supply, sir. Sir, possible? Sir. You are unmute, please. Unmute, sir. Unmute. Supply, sir. Unmute. Sir, not, we are not audible, sir. Please unmute yourself. Sir. Please unmute. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Unmute us. Unmute us. Unmute us. Unmute us. Can you? Yes. Yes. No, we can't see your slide. We can see you. I think there is a network issue with Dr. Haple. Yeah, I think, yeah, 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 yes, sir. Yeah, okay, can we see? Started, sir. Yes, 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 sir. So now we are All seeing trouble. the yeah. slide okay. show, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, now, now you are seeing, you know? Now yes. we are seeing, yes. yes. Well, the time is over. You I know. Yeah, only 10 minutes, Dr. Maniara, I agree with you. But this is, I do not know, this is the first time this has happened. I thought you are seeing the slides. I'll go very fast. Yeah, because these are the yeah, because this is the case I was talking about the Kaposi sarcoma. This oh. is the next yeah, this is the next patient. Uh, Dr. Mitra, these patients are come. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. I can see it. Yeah. So what do you think of? Uh, sir, extensive seboric dermatitis, variant yes, of KB. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, seboric dermatitis is one of yeah, the age defining yeah, yeah. criteria. We diagnose as a seboric, correct, absolutely right. Yeah, but you know, we did a scraping and you see what turned out to be demodex follicular. Demodex, again, yes. yes. Yeah, Rhodesia yes. and demodex. Yeah, this, this is the another patient she came with. Again, we diagnosed seboric dermatitis and see Demo. what it turned out to be. We did a scraping. It turned out to be chicken mite. Okay. Yeah, this is another patient, adult patient came with this same thing. We did a uh, scraping and it turned out to be scabies. So the yes. message here I want to give to all those juniors that any patients of RVD comes, you have to take help of uh, microbiologists, pathologists, just clinical diagnosis is not enough. This is the another patient, a 43-year-old seropositive patient, farmer from the Latour, present with the asymptomatic skin color, Legions like this patient was on ART. So, Dr. Saini, what do you think? Dr. Saini? Yes, I am thinking. Yeah. It's a little bit of 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 a yeah, so we can think of molluscum, disseminated tuberculosis, disseminated cryptococcus, histopathosis, yes, yes. penicillin. There are many conditions of that. So yes. here we did a chest x ray, USG to rule out tuberculosis, and then we did a histopathology. We saw intracellular spore in the macrophages, GMS test, and then we did a culture, culture is a creamy white colony. So it was a case of disseminated histoplasmosis. So we mm. have to keep in mind about the histoplasmosis, penicillinosis, tuberculosis, and coccidomycosis. There are many conditions where the biopsy is very necessary because I remember Dr. Martin Black, he was in our department in 94. I, I, he, he said, Dr. Saple, what do you think? I said, sir, what is this? This is a molluscum. He said, no, have you done a biopsy? No. 
He said, let me know. We did a biopsy. It turned out to be cryptococcus. You know, so this is how the HIV is. We have to, yeah, this is the patient after treatment of the histoplasmosis. This is mm -hmm. the, another patient. This patient was referred from Vijaywada from Dr. Ram Babu, which is very well known for HIV. He, 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 this is the patient, Shidi Purko, was 73. Then he started ART, that is Saquinavir that time, and DDC. Sidipur count came 157, but patient was having fever, loss of weight, and dry cough. So this patient was referred to me. We did a chest x-ray, and what you see is a full of tuberculosis, miliary tuberculosis. So Dr. Reddy, what do you think about this? And be short, yeah. Patient was started on antiretroviral, he had a cough, fever, and by the time he came to my clinic, we got a chest X-ray done. Chest X-ray X -ray shows the miliary tuberculosis. Uh, uh, Dr. Parsardi. Doctor, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bumis. Okay. So this was the what we call as the iris. We started, you see, in the iris, most important is any patient comes to you before starting ART, patient is asymptomatic, please rule out underlying approaching infection or chances are there patient may go into iris. This is another example of the iris. There are many patients. Sometimes the patients, I think I'll take a last slide, patient present to the chronic diarrhea. How do you manage? Uh, Dr. Reddy. Dr. Reddy, okay, I think I'll go. Patient either come with acute or chronic diarrhea. Whenever they come with a chronic diarrhea, we, we, we go for this hostile examination for the isospora or the cryptospora, or sometimes they get the candida, and very rarely they can give this cyclospora. These are the things you have to, yeah. I think- Many I'll, patients respond yeah. to refer gut. Pardon? Rifa gut. Pardon? Can you? Rifa gut. Rifa gut. Drug. Uh, his trade yeah. name. Okay. See, uh, uh, we, we go for the stool examination. We do in our OPD. Dr. Maniara and myself we used to do take one, one drop of the stool put also, and put one drop of iodine. And you can demonstrate in your OPD. It takes only five minutes to demonstrate isospora. We used to do ourselves. Because very few pathologists are aware of this about the cryptospora, isospora, because they have not seen their lifetime. And sometimes you used to see the IP, pseudo IP, that is candida. And of course, then we used to report for AB, where you can see sometimes tubercular diarrhea and cyclospora. Cyclospora diarrhea has been, has been published. Our, our, our article is because this is the rare one. And sometimes you get this strongulitis. So these are the various causes of. Sometimes they Stop come. Yeah. Yeah. Shall I stop Dr. it? Stop it, sir. Dr. Bumesh, regarding few points about this complicated papules where we have learned. Yeah. Okay. You, you added. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. This complicated papules, if you see, and before going to investigations, even the some clinical clues are also will help. For example, complicated papules without any systemic involvement, just molluscum contagion. Whereas, complicated papules with the pyrexia, uh, and with the neck stiffness or any unconscious comatose in those conditions, we can think of cryptococcus in those conditions. Just the Indian ink preparation will confirm the cases. Whereas umbilicated papules with hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, severe anemia, in those conditions, uh, we can think of histoplasmosis like that. And even the area also, uh, the, where the person, where the patient, the area also will help. For example, in Manipur, where the bamboos are uh, the common habitat of this histoplasma capsulator. And thank you, Vimesh, for sharing the very good knowledge. I agree. If the patients are asymptomatic, you can identify molluscums okay. because they're umbilicated, That's but they're ulcerative, they're symptomatic. You have to rule out the underlying. And one of the cause is penicillosis patients coming from Northeast. Well, I remember, Manipur, yeah, yeah I, I was in Chiang Mai, well, there is one Dr. Thira, 
95 he showed me one case that i said it looks like more supply yeah can you yeah, stop i'll i'll finish within a minute he said no it's a penicillinosis another patient he showed i said is acne he said no it's penicillinosis another he showed i said it looks like a pnt papillonecrosis tuberculosis he said no it's a penicillinosis that's how we have to learn and they, and thank you very much and sorry for the all trouble thank you thank you very much yeah yeah i think we have come to the end of this uh, first uh, panel discussion and uh, i think yes uh, sapte sir with his experience has so much of uh, clinical material that is always uh, good to see all these rare cases and very difficult mm -hmm. cases but mm -hmm. i think yes i with all the input from the panelists i am sure it must have been uh, it's it is a useful uh, discussion for most of the people who are dealing with uh, std and hi thank you thank you so much dr vengeshan so, yes. dr vengeshan you can introduce the second speaker please mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. मूविंग फॉर द second panel discussion on uh, hiv and the session will be moderated by another giant in the field of std and hiv dr maniar sir i think the both of dr sapre and dr maniar they have done lot of original work i already told you they have got many publications they have got uh, they have presented this uh, their data so many times we all have heard them so many times and uh, showing some very very interesting and difficult cases so i think yes he uh, most of them i think don't need his introduction they he is already a very really well known person in this field so i think sir dr maniar sir yes you can take over for this next panel discussion thank you good evening to you all of you uh at outreach i like to thank uh, dr bhumesh kumar my friend dr murugan and uh, uh, obviously dr vikrant and others uh, for me to be given a chance uh, to speak to you my way of conducting this uh, seminar uh, can I, we cannot start screen share while other participant is showing sharing maniar sir you introduce the pan your panelists yeah yeah i am going to sir so get me the picture sir Yeah, this is uh, oh, this is my slide, but where is the panelist uh, slide, Bhumesh? Yeah, I, I already after after your slide, the panelist slides are there. Just you introduce them, or then after only you can share. Yeah, but, uh, but you have I to have a sharing. Ah, uh, introduction slides, please, Shiv. Yeah, yes, Vikrant. Yes, Vikrant. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, you stop sharing, yeah. then they will. Yeah. Sir, first you stop sharing. Then yes, the screen was okay. will uh, start sharing. I'm sorry about it, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I think I like to introduce the uh, panelists. Uh, my friend, Dr. Raket Bhati, who I know for quite some time, and uh, he's from Punjab. I was under the impression that in North uh, the interest on HIV field is uh, remote, but it is uh, both team of uh, Ravi Saini and Rakesh has uh, taken a great lead, and uh, I'm fortunate to have him as. Uh, uh co speaker with me next please next slide please yeah ravi vadrevu is another friend of mine from uh, kakinada having a, a keen interest in the field of hiv and uh, he has uh, lots of uh, clinical input and we will hear him uh, subsequently next slide please aruna chalam uh, somebody whom i really don't know but is from belor and uh, he is in uh, charge of art center and i would request him to 
pass on a comment when we are making a presentation uh, with his experience in the ART center. The next one, please. Madam Ragi Melotra is a uh, obstetrician and gynecologist from, uh, 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 from UP and uh, she's one of the rare person in, with us because she's a gynecologist and have a focused interest in the field of HIV. And uh, she has a good account of her contribution to MTCT. Next slide, please. Dr. Deepak uh, is from Vidarva. He's a practicing dermatologist and uh, I'm fortunate that he has a uh, great interest in the field of uh, HIV AIDS and STD besides vitiligo and immunobullet diseases. Shall we start now? Yeah. Here. This share. Yes, sir. You, you, now you start sharing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks again. Uh, I just want to uh, say to everyone here that uh, my session is a bit different here. I'm going to give you a quick uh, introductory presentation on uh, management challenges, followed by Dr. Rakesh Bhatti talking about uh, impact of HIV, uh, antiretroviral therapy on HIV. And then uh, Dr. Ravi Vadrev is going to talk about aging with HIV. And you're also going to talk about pre-exposure prophylaxis. At the end, we'll ask Dr. Ragini, Dr. Aruna Sharam, and Dr. Deepak to pick their comments. I don't want to have any questionnaire in between because we don't want to run short of time. And uh, what I'm going to show you is all my personal experience uh, since more than 36 years with 1,15,000 patients seen. Now uh, something like 27,000 people on uh, antiretroviral therapy. I can't proceed. Can we move the slides? Can I move the slides? You can you can move by yourself. Yes, 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 yes. I can't. Sorry. Sorry. How are you? Sorry, sorry. What's the problem? Sir, yeah, we, we are seeing that. Yes. So your screen yeah. is visible. Okay. Uh, this is what I talked to you about the sequence of events. Okay, yes, let's see. talk about uh, what's the scenario today. Uh, many people in the past session said about uh, declining the number of new cases. Uh, I partly agree. I don't agree totally because uh, what a reporting is happening, even in India, is a tip of the iceberg. The 38 million people all over the world uh, having been infected. And what is most important is only 81% of people uh, uh, know about their HIV status and 67% are on anterior therapy. And only 59% of that are virological suppression. India is the largest epidemic and under totally underreported cases of 2.1 million. All my 1,15,000 patients not reported to that so far by me. 79% of people know their status. I, again, don't agree with that. 56% of antiviral therapy, possible. And we don't know how many proportions of people are under viral suppression. But I can tell you, among 26,000 patients of mine on antiviral therapy, all the patients who are adherent are virologically suppressed. What is most good news is most of the pregnant mother and breastfeeding mother are having access to antiviral therapy. So we have a hardly much a newborn child infected with HIV, but it can be happening sporadically. Don't forget, as my friend Dr. Saple said, uh, TB is a common cause of death amongst HIV patients. One in every three days, don't forget TB, TB, TB. If you don't TB, you don't need to worry. A multi-system disease, please remember, HIV is not just infectious disease expert facility. I'm not an infectious disease doctor. I'm like you guys, uh, STD specialists with high intellectuals. Unless until you have high intellectuals, you can't pick up HIV specialty. You have to be oriented to multi-system. This is growing list of 
eight defining illness or the condition, various conditions that indicate you to screen for HIV. It's a big list, it's growing bigger and bigger. Please remember esophageal canidiasis. Please remember extrapulmonary TB. And in fact, I would say it is cost effective to screen every TB patients. Everybody knows uh, what the revolution made by HIV antiretroviral drugs. Pandemic is going down, yes. Morbidity, mortality going down, 100%. Opportunity events going down, quality of life going up, life expectancy going up, and an empty seat is almost nearing the eligible. is very important, which we'll talk about it later because of anterior therapy and of course, socioeconomic condition affected. But what is most important is 37% of a new infection reduced. Please remember, not much. People are still having their lifestyle changes not visible. And then 86% decline in the day. That looks perfect, good. Provided you are adherent to anterior therapy. Look at the list. I was in a leprosy field for long. And I realized if I would have stayed on, I would have never survived. Look at every year, there's a new molecule. In 37 years, look at the list of molecules that we have available today in the field of HIV. Every time you have a new molecule, it's very, 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 very difficult to get acquainted to unless you are a full-time specialist, not like uh, mistress by HIV doctor, I mean, infectious disease doctor. You just see HIV occasionally. This is my bread and butter. I put my Self dedicated to along with Dr. Staple for HIV. Then only you will have a grasp of multiple molecules that are available and when to use it. You remember very well, look at the rapid evolution, monotherapy to, to NRTI therapy, heart therapy, and so on, the, the evolution. And look at this chart. It tells you now integrated based therapy, single tablet therapy, and then your new drugs. Then you now they say only two drugs. And then various modes of delivery of a new drugs. It's a huge way. It's injectable, it's sustained release, it's a, a, a patch, so it's a vaginal ring and so on. And then when to start ART? Look at any guidelines. You must start ART at any stage, irrespective of CD4 count, viral load, asymptomatic or symptomatic. And the real drug of choice is uh, as very rightly recommended by uh, WHO is uh, Doltegravir, uh, 3TC, and, uh, and uh, TDF. It's the cheap one single tablet preparation. And uh, alternatively, there are many combinations of drugs. Uh, I also use quite often Bactigravir, TF, FTC combinations. We'll talk about it in the meantime. And then the advantages and disadvantages of various integrated inhibitor. I have patients on raltegravir for more than seven years. They all do well. Only thing, you take one tablet twice a day. But anyway, today's current drug of choice is doltegravir. And uh, don't get surprised, it's an international marketing politics. Bactigravir is equally good, a little better. And then doravirin. We haven't got it here yet, but it's a good NNRTI. It can be used as a first-line drug. It has a better CNS safety profile. It is having a very few drug to drug into in a high resistant barrier. What are the challenges? I mean, you would like to use a booster PI uh, versus an INSTI. I think it's the individual calorie. You don't have to follow a guideline here. You have to individually decide what. I mean, if you're waiting for lab results and you want to start up the treatment, you can start a PI based therapy and then switch over to integrated uh, based therapy. And then comes NNRTI-based therapy. I mean, it's all if the patient is experiencing side effects due to the doltegravir or other integral inhibitor, you might switch back to NNRTI. We'll talk about it, which are the side effects that are encountered. And then comes two drug therapy as a first line. And today it is marketed in India by generic company, doltegravir and 3TC combination. Single tablet, around 1,000 rupees per month. If look at the advancement. There are many other single tablets, but remember this particular uh, combination available today in the market. It's now being recommended in most of the people who are as a first-line therapy. And then comes rapid. Look at advancement. Test and treat. Every guideline agrees 
to rapid initiation of antiretroviral therapy. And uh, what will be the drug of choice? Of course, dolitragravir, TDF, and 3TC. Or you can use bactigravir, rapid CNTF. Remember, rapid initiation. Then comes, what are the advantages? Even before laboratory tests are available, today you found that Dr. Supply said the patient confirmed HIV positive. It's better you initiate therapy for a quick viral suppression, increased chances of retention in care, and of course, sustain. The rapid ART, according to DHS, is the key to help HIV epidemic before the patient gets lost to follow. So remember, rapid initiation of ART. And then comes the, what are the, what are the disadvantage of delaying ART? High risk of mortality, reduced chances of viral suppression, increased risk of hospitalization, most potential drug-to-drug -drug reaction, most likely iris reaction, and many other, uh, uh, the uh, non-age defining illness, neurocognitive in, uh, diseases and so on. So earlier you start treatment, the better it is. And um, switch therapy now, that's another very good thing. If you have a documented toxicity to the current triple drugs, uh, you would definitely start uh, to drug therapy <clears throat> or you want to simplify the pill burden or you want to cut down the drug to drug reaction or drug and food interaction or to allow optimize ART during pregnancy or you're planning pregnancy or to reduce the cost. So remember now from three drugs, we are moving to two drugs. And um, remember one sentence, which I'm sure every one of you in the audience would love to ask is, if your patient is doing very well on AZT, 3TC and Navarapine, AZT, TC and, and, and if you are in, if you want to change over, I would never do that. Several patients who are on older regime, well tolerated, hardly with any side effects. I have a lady doctor who is on AZT, 3TC and Navarapine, for 20 years, no side effects at all. So don't switch if you feel your patient tolerating the old body group. And then TDF, what's the role of TDF today? Of course, it's a long experience. Uh, it helps in controlling your weight uh, if you are on, or you can, it's safe during pregnancy. It's available as a single tablet combination and so on. Abecovid, I have hardly seen Abecovid sensitivity in my practice, I have 1,200 patients on Abacavir. None, none are showing any. And it's a long, it's been drug tolerated for so long. It has been used for long. And uh, it is co-formulated with DTG. People talk about cardiovascular damage. I'm not very sure on that. I think even if you take HIV negative population in India, they have a genetic tendency to have cardiovascular disease. And then come long acting. Please remember, very soon, very soon, we are going to injectable cabotagravir with LP combination. And that will be once in a month, or now they say it is once in two months. There are many new drugs in trial. Look at HIV. Many drug, new drugs in trial, more efficient, and the less frequency administration. And then comes the WHO is the target. Nine, by 2020, 90% to be diagnosed. 90% on treatment, 90% virologically suppressed. What did they achieve? 81% new, their status, 82% on treatment, and 82% virus suppressed, as I said before. Now they want to target by 230, 95% should know, 95% should be viral uh, on ART, and 95% should be virologically suppressed. Let's hope we achieve it. It all depends on the national program uh, motivation, a political uh, will uh, to uh, end the epidemic. Don't forget one thing, though I have what is called 26,000 uh, 26, patients on, uh, on ART, what is most important is retention in care. If your patient's not adherent, not in a retention to care, then it has no meaning at all because the number of people get lost to follow up and uh, we don't know whether they're alive or dead. So retention in care, is extremely important. There's no tuberculosis. Six month treatment, nine months treatment. This is lifelong treatment, like uh, hypertension, diabetes, and so on. What is most important in my practice is late presenter. I have, at any given time, five or six admissions 
because they are the late presenter. And what do you mean by late presenter? It's less than 350 CD for count. Present is an age defining illness, and it is one of the biggest problem worldwide. Even in Europe and uh, uh, Western country, 15 to 66 percent people are uh, uh, late presenter. In of course Asia is 72 to 83 percent. Half of the newly diagnosed HIV cases, I agree with this particular statement, are the late presenter, and. Uh, they have a high morbidity, morbidity, mortality, which is late presentation related, untoward transmission because they are late presenter, and a high cost of health. And uh, what is the answer to this? Universal HIV testing is a gateway to HIV care, treatment, prevention, and end epidemic. This is what I was trying to say. Today, the science is so advanced that if you have undetectable viral load, you are not infectious, as you can see from this slide. Sexually, mother to child during labor, during delivery, or sharing syringes, or even a breastfeeding. So this is the greatest advantage that we have in a field of HIV. So remember, transmission rate is almost zero if you are patient who are virologically suppressed. The next slide is my personal experience for 10 years. We have 33, 3,300 pregnancy, with natural intercourse, undetectable, could untransmissible being the principal. So we have discordant couple, Dr. Ragini. They have been offered uh, uh, pregnancy parenthood and uh, they have a natural sex and uh, they do well. I mean, most of their babies are uninfected. The partners are uninfected. I have four gays who are positive. Their sperm was transmitted to the woman who is a surrogate mother and they have a baby with no infection, the four of them. Then comes mother to child prevention. Remember one thing today, whenever the mother reports to the antenatal care, it's never too late, give DTG best, the early integral based therapy, which is the viral pill or any other triple combination of TDF, 3TC and DTG. It brings down viral load and it helps you in effectively controlling the mother to child transmission. And not only that, uh, it has no neural tab defect. I mean, that was all, same thing was talked about if I were. It's all, all said and done. Even if you combine with TF, again, very powerful in suppressing viral load, it is again safe during pregnancy. Somebody said about poor CD4 count, recovery. 15 to 20% of people on ART have a poor CD4 count recovery in spite of viral suppression. The only problem with this is it is associated with AIDS and non AIDS related morbidity and mortality. Don't switch, don't modify the drugs. Try to find out, as someone said in the before, and try to find out what is the cause of CD4 lymphocytopenia. Is it because of drug? Is it is because of hepatitis C infection, what Ravi Saini said, or is it due to malignancy? Very, very important for Dr. Supple mentioned. You have nothing that you can do about it. It will definitely, I have a doctor who CD4 count never came up till nine years. Today, CD4 count, which was 100, has come down to 50. The only modification. Lastly, but not the least, early initiation of ARD provides the best opportunity for maximum CD4 recovery. This is gross side effect. Abakavi, ischemic heart disease, TDF, bone marrow density problem, kidney defect, if I were in neuropsychiatric manifestation and uh, um, with what is inhibitor or nephrolithiasis or reduction in GFR rate or ischemic heart disease. Please remember me and Dr. Supple have an experience of seeing immune reconstitution syndrome, quite, quite, quite common. It's something which occurs in about uh, three months time, but I've seen somebody getting iris even at the end of one year. And remember, it's a very, very important to clinically diagnose this. Whether it is paradoxical reaction, that means uh, the existing disease getting worse, or it is it's unmasking. Here is you see leprosy getting unmasked or tuberculosis unmasked on starting antiretroviral therapy. What's the biggest side effect today with the currently available antiretrotherapy? Weight gain, weight gain, weight gain. This is not lipodystrophy. This is the weight gain, very common with INSTR. 
very common with TAF. Nobody knows what the mechanism of weight gain. And I will show you some of the study done that if you have a combination of TAF, FTC, and Doltegravir, you have a highest weight gain. I'll show you the slide as compared to the power in TDF, FTC. Same way, amongst the INSTI, INSTI is the highest chance of weight gain as compared to protein inhibitor. The list is with NNRTI. Look at this, my patient in a three months time after starting a Dolitogravy, TAF and TTC or FTC combination, look at the weight gain. It's very, I think weight gain is associated with the metabolic syndrome. To this patient, serum insulin level, blood sugar level, you do lipid level, and you will always see some changes over there. So this is the biggest problem of a, a newer molecule. Uh, what I do is I don't stop the uh, treatment. I try to see the patients of an exercise, diet, and try to see what best I can achieve. And uh, HIV and aging, uh, which Dr. Ravi Vadrav is going to talk about. And uh, what's the beauty? I mean, have you been, it's not difficult to suppress the viral load. With antiretroviral therapy, your viral load is always well suppressed. If right choice is done, what is more, and the life expectancy is fantastically good. But what is most important, people still die because of multiple comorbidities. And because of multiple comorbidities, there are multiple drugs of polypharmacy, drug to drug interaction, and suboptimal adherent. Look at this on your lap, HIV negative guy who's 80, year, 80 years. On your right, 80 years guy who is HIV positive, but otherwise well controlled. And these are the various complications which can happened post ART era. It's a big list of it. And uh, what are the causes of death before ART era? TB, non-mycobacterial infection, non-TB mycobacterial infection, PCP, toxoplasmosis, liver disease. Now it's kidney disease, heart disease, cachexia, wasting, frailty, non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And don't forget, late presenter, iris, they all can cause death. What's the summary today? We have a great reduction in the HIV incidence by 30% uh, because of ART. Uh, it has made uh, uncurable disease uh, or uncontrolled disease well under control like diabetes, blood pressure, and so on. And uh, what's the policy today? Initially, it was test and wait. It is not test and treat. And we have a goal to end HIV epidemic. Don't forget late diagnosis continue to jeopardize the health of people with HIV. Overall mortality remains six times higher in a person as compared to the general population in spite of viral suppression. It's all because of continued immune activation information. Earlier initiation of ART is the best answer. And don't forget the holistic approach. I now request Dr. Ravi Vadrevu to introduce Dr. Rakesh Bharti for his next presentation. Thank you. Sharing Thanks, Dr. Maniar. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Dr. Maniar. Rakesh Bharti's introductory slide has been uh, already projected by Dr. Maniar in his introductory slides. Dr. Bharti, like what I was doing in Andhra, or Dr. Maniar and uh, Saple doing a decade ahead of the rest of the crowd in the whole India scene. Rakesh Bharti and Ravi Saini were doing the same in Punjab. It's the connecting the dots that's going on from the various uh, pharma companies and the four are like STNR like this. So congratulations, Bumesh, for putting this together. Already we are just on dot. Dr. Maniar has completed well in time. I request Dr. Rakesh Bharti to go ahead with his presentation. Dr. Bharti, please. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for your kind words. And I'm mesmerized. Dr. Maniar told me in the beginning that if I exceed time, kindly stop me. I could not, even if it, I would have wanted. And you know, who can talk so clearly except a master? He is a master. He, he gave the message so crystal clear. I, I'm here to talk about what happened after uh, uh, art. You know, time has a beauty. Dr. Saple and Dr. Maniar were, you know, uh, they are excellent people. They have seen so many cases. 27,000 is not a small number. 
and they have taken us through in the diagnostics and therapeutics that how times change. So, and I also saw some many patients of various types. These are few photographs. I can tell you now that there are three phases of HIV epidemic. First one was before 96 when we hardly had anything. Second became in 96 when there was heart availability. And the third is now when, uh, you know, it is a distinct era when patients still do not achieve a normal lifespan, but they remain to be defined older HIV infected patient. And they have a higher than expected risk for number of diseases. Uh, the challenges for us post heart are to reduce the new infections as Dr. Man, uh, Maria rightly said that to test everybody, universal testing program is the thing. And then giving treatment to everybody, that is important. That is the second point, like we have to increase access to the care, decrease the HIV deaths, increase the preventions, increase the testing and societal exit. Ultimately, the goal is to end the epidemic. The challenges are related to treatment. Changing the regimen is not easy. You know, many a times I call Dr. Maniar or Dr. Saple that I'm into trouble. This is the treatment and now what to change. Related to age and heart effect on CVS, CNS bones, however little, this is important. And related to age-related cancers, it is also related, which is a most forgotten topic, is the psyche and social acceptance. Despite a person living for so many years because of HIV and heart, there are psychological aspects to it. Uh, and the challenges are related to life itself, like marrying, like having sex, like reproducing. These are the challenges. The challenges are risk of non-AIDS morbidity is higher among ARB treated HIV positive individuals than in their age matched uninfected peers for reasons directly related to the disease or to the treatment. And all these degenerative comorbid diseases have a negative impact on overall functioning and quality of life and they are thought to be related to accelerated or premature thought to be. Let me underline that. Aging HIV population, mean age of people living with HIV and AIDS will increase to 45 by 2025. That is NACO estimation. And age of 50 or more will increase from 19% to 37%. This aging HIV epidemic will lead to more non-AIDS related morbidities and treatment complexities. Because if a patient on CV, uh, cardiovascular system uh, comorbidity or a renal comorbidity, you have to modify the regime. So you need a multidisciplinary approach. Renal disease in an untreated HIV uh, is a different thing, but many antiretroviral drugs, Dr. Maniar was giving a hint also, are nephrotoxic. Similarly, the bone disease prevalence of osteopenia and osteoporosis is at least three times greater in HIV positive subjects. Persistent inflammation is probably uh, causally related to the bone disease as many biomarkers of inflammatory bone disease like IL-6 and TNF-alpha are higher in HIV disease. And there are other contributory factors like ART itself, vitamin D deficiency, which is so common these days. Then there are possible contributing factors to the decreased bone marrow density in HIV positive patients. If you look at this slide, it's very uh, crowded slide, but in short, I can tell you that uh, cytokines, liver disease, smoking, uh, amenorrheal premature, menopause, fat deposition in the marrow, decreased fat, all these can lead to BMD decrease. I'm not going further. Uh, those uh, residents here can take a picture of this slide and can use for reference. And then metabolic dysfunction in HIV infection and relationship to the cardiovascular disease. You know, we cannot forget as the person is aging, the cardiovascular effects can be there. There can be insulin resistance because of heart. Their HIV infection can cause dyslipidemia. Genetic influences can uh, lead on to body fat redistributions. And same thing can happen with coma. All these things can, you know, affect the cardiovascular system. Not only that, it, there is an increased risk of malignant diseases. Uh, Non-AIDS related cancers, there are higher cancer rates in long-term ARB treated patients. Uh, HIV associated immune deficiency may be the primary factor driving an excess risk of many non-AIDS related cancers, increasing prevalence. Otherwise also in an aging population, you can see various cancers in males like cancer prostate, 
in females like cancer breast and cancer uh, cervix. And then you have to see that what uh, changes you have to do in the treatment. Increased incidence of non aids defining cancers over time. I have said Kaposi sarcoma is going down, non Hodgkin lymphoma is going down, but anal cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, melanoma, and colorectal cancer are going up. Not only that, the neurocognitive functional defects. HIV-associated neurocognitive disorders and dementia is a hidden epidemic. HIV, we, we miss it many a times. HIV-associated inflammation is believed to be a major factor in comorbid CNS disease. And the debate is, is ongoing CNS disease due to inadequate CNS penetration of ARVs or it is due to residual low-grade inflammation of the virus? So uh, we have to work on this hemopoietic system, the double insult of aging and HIV infection can affect the hemopoietic system and can reduce the ability of immune system to mount effective response to infections, vaccines, and other stresses. You know, in these COVID days, many people were asking the HIV positive people that can we have the COVID vaccine? So you have to give some answers to them. Today, the challenges are of life and living. There are no more questions of death. The foremost challenge comes with longevity and living with a chronic disease and have to have a perfect mental balance. As the patient, as the patient lives longer, times come when he or she thinks that going to healthcare provider repeatedly is like going to a Russian shop with a limited budget. Although the ART centers are giving free, but still, you know, commu commuting to the center is a problem. Patients start getting tired. I know people who committed suicide because of this reason. Then zero discordant couples, do we have some answers for them? Yes, the options are full of challenges. We need, to, Dr. Mariah rightly said that he had some zero discordant couples where babies were delivered since the viral load was uh, completely suppressed and they were on good regimen. So we can allow unprotected sex in these cases. We can ask for insemination using donor sperm. We can ask for Adoption, intrauterine insemination after washing the sperm free of HIV. I have some uh, four or five patients here who has successfully you know, reproduced. The earlier question of dying and death is the past. Now patients have to cope up with the issues of social acceptance, coping with the side effects, coping with the drug resistance and need of second line therapies, which fortunately has become so cheap. Uh, two drug, uh, Dr. Maniar was telling, is just costing 1,000 rupees a month. What else we are looking for? And uh, even if you buy that anti diabetic or anti hypertensive me medicines, they may cost the same. So there is, and you have to take just one pill. And what precautions? Hardly any. Hardly any. So uh, I think I always tell my patients is much better uh, bargain and coping the life live in a normal way to reduce the burden of comorbidities. Mental health providers, yes, they have to familiarize themselves with the issues. They can help HIV patients cope with this devastating disease. The key challenges are to accelerate research, extend the human resources, intensify involvement of the affected individuals. The newer challenge to end the epidemic is the answers are hidden in vaccine, accessibility, affordability, and acceptable treatment. What action? If we don't action, we invite death. Thank you very much, Dr. Marian, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, Dr. Bhumesh, and the whole team to give me uh, this opportunity to present. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Ravi, could you go out? Yeah. Shall I go ahead with my presentation, Dr. Marian? Please, 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 please. Are you able Dr. to? Uh, uh, Rakesh has made your presentation very easier. Uh, are you able to see my screen with Ganesha there? Go ahead. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Next. yes. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Bhumesh, Burgan, Dr. Sauji, and the entire team at the ASTINAR, and my teammates, Dr. Maniar, Rakesh Bharti, and panel discussants, Dr. Arunachalam, Ragini Merotra, and Dr. Deepak. Really, it's a wonderful evening. Two weddings to catch up with after the webinar, but couldn't resist saying yes to this proposal. So this overview has been wonderfully given by Dr. Maniar and Dr. Rakesh Bharti. 
and there are 4.2 million people accounting to 13% of pwha with the virus who are all aging and most of these people are in the low and middle income countries and why are older people with hiv are increasing mm. in numbers that's because powerful hiv drugs are allowing many people to live longer and healthier lives uh, in the careful hands of physicians like all of us and most new hiv cases occur in younger people over 50 are acquiring hiv at a increasing rate this is also a factor maybe the increased sense of safety the patient feels after he is becoming healthy they are making them more, most sexually promiscuous so profile of the problem is many of the medical problems now faced by people who are aged or age related so what we see in the general society or general uh, pool of patients is an extension into the hiv positive patients however there is an accelerated aging because the health problems because of the constant immune stimulation and inflammation that's going on there is what is called an accelerated aging that's what we need to keep in mind so our society is aging at an unprecedented rate people aged 65 and older make up 17% of the total population by 2030 an estimated 26% of the population could be called elderly so the athena cohort done by the netherlands mm. uh, scientists have found that from 28% this may jump up to 73% by 2030 as far as pwh are concerned and the aging hiv population and in addition these people as we just discussed now may be vulnerable to the routine uh, problems that any elderly gentleman or lady may face so at these people exhibit a higher number of comorbidities so the aim and objective of discussing this issue is to advance the debate about the most appropriate management for the older hiv infected individuals and what is the optimal clinical management which is yet defined anywhere so we need to integrate the various guidelines and apply the various well studied aspects to a given patient who is more than 50 so our first patient is a male 57 years on art for the last 23 years was receiving tdf based three drug combo pill for the last 4 years so his routine workup which we do usually once in 3 to 6 months to 1 year depending on the patient's compliance economy etc so a recent workup showed an excellent cd4 of 850 and undetectable plasma viral load however his serum creatinine was 2.8 mg per dl is a known diabetic under good control using oral hypoglycemic agents so because we are periodically checking on this patient this early rise in the serum creatinine was picked up and was linked to the tdf and immediately tdf has changed to taf based regimen no pi inducted because of the advanced age we don't want to again tamper with the lipid related problems etc and weekly renal function tests were monitored by 6 weeks creatinine level returned to normal cd4 remained high with pra- with the plasma viral load remaining undetectable bmd test was done and uh, it is found to be normal case study 2 a male 52 years on art he was using abacavir based art and suddenly he came with dyspnea on mild exertion could not tolerate full tmt then the cardiologist preferred to do a coronary angiography it showed two blocks and this patient underwent stenting at a tertiary center in a far away city uh, which is not showing any discrimination against i need to tell this a lot of cardiologists are discriminating our patients and we need to be very careful when referring to a cardiac center for evaluation because we don't want stigma still to rule the roost then this patient art has changed to non abacavir non pi regimen which is dolutegravir based taf based ftc lipid lowering agent was added in him and patient is doing well for the last 3 years after this cardiac stent so the next four slides i have borrowed from the ccvo and i'm going to show some interesting data there so this health hiv survey was done in the us and majority of survey respondents were of low income so not much different from a developed country into our country most of our patients as you realize though they are in paying clinics or they are in the government clinics still their economy is low because maybe perhaps over the last two decades their earning capacities were compromised for one reason or other and so 
92% are virally suppressed and report taking their antiretrovirals every day. So, but some more than 50% have got depression, elevated cholesterol, hypertension, neuropathy, or any other complication uh, which is evidenced by chronic inflammatory change. So, provided interaction, 50% of the respondents experience stigma. I'm sure all of you as seasoned HIV physicians, the panel uh, of the, uh, this group will agree that still stigma exists in the society with the patient uh, expressing in one way or other. But most of the respondents are very much satisfied with their coordination of the care. Now, we, if we look at the healthcare expenses, this is pretty much sure. Every week I'll be uh, referring some of my patients to the government ART center simply because the economy is making this aging HIV positive patient unable to pay for his expenses. So very much the same in the US also. So scientifically, what is the impact of long-term infection on immunity? The immune function declines, subclinical inflammation takes place, which is going into a long-term organ damage, which may be again accelerated by the drugs which we are giving by poly polypharmacy. And common clinical problems, the aging are geriatric syndromes, falls, incontinence, frailty, dementia, confusion, so on and so forth. Sarcopenia and disability. We should encourage all our patients that money is one of the last slides showing 70 plus non-HIV and 80 years HIV positive muscular gentleman. Tells it all. We need to encourage our patients to do good amount of physical activity. The common clinical problems are polypharmacy, social difficulties, acceptability to the family, children who are growing up into getting into income. And sometimes this father or mother may be dependent for his ART supply on the earning son or daughter. Optimal clinical management of older HIV infected people is not yet well defined all over the globe. So non-AIDS clinical conditions, as I already told, especially coronary vascular disease, chronic kidney disease, and concurrent malignancies are the ones we need to look at. Neurocognitive impairment is what makes them dependent on their family members or attendants. And this is where we need a social worker to help them in counseling the whole family as well as, and uh, Dr. Maniar as well as Dr. Rakesh Bharti have told about the hand and the neurocognitive disorder to some extent. Functional limitations. In addition to the syndrome of frailty, impaired objective measures of physical function also are there in these patients. We often see them walking very slowly into our clinics. So we need to help them out through physiotherapy, et cetera. Polypharmacy and drug-drug interactions are very common especially when the patient is on more than five drugs, we need to critically look at what drugs we can cut down on the, in this patient. So how do we approach in the treatment? Standard is the medical history, check for medical problems. We all are masters of this, I need not elaborate, but especially look at age appropriate assessment, comorbidity, especially cancer, CVD bone, and Hep B, Hep C vaccine update, nutritional status, neuropsychological evaluation, and looking for geriatric syndromes. And our actions will be based on this special attention what we give. Early detection, what I told about the, uh, that chronic kidney disease patient, prevent drug-drug interaction, uh, put them on a proper ART. I'm going to dwell on that in, a, in the next couple of slides. ART interventions, that go ahead study as we are aware, about the role of Ebekaver in accelerating the cardiovascular disease and some other controversial articles also. However, many guidelines recommend caution. So, ART interventions because of various drug drug interactions. So, older adults will have to see concomitant medica medication. We may think simple calcium, iron, etc. But the, these things may interfere with integrase inhibitors, particularly more than 70% of our patients nowadays are on dolutegravir. We need to take this into account. And clinical trials. So far, all the clinical trials have been on young adults who are HIV positive. And therefore, the toxicities may might have been underestimated. We need to really include aging population in the clinical trials. So finally, before I close, health is a state of complete physical and mental well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So aging population is a global phenomena. HIV patients pose special problems. We need to concentrate on cardiovascular uh, risk, cerebrovascular risk, CKD, 
and we should concentrate on least TRT with maximum safety to be considered. Social and psychological factors have to be taken care of. And we are going to see more of these older patients. And thank you for the patient hearing. I wanted to save a couple of minutes so that the panel can come into the discussion after the next talk. Yes, so, Dr. Maniar, you want to say Ravi, something? Ravi, can you short down the pre-exposure slides? Can you cut yeah. short, Priya? Please. I can, I can. I'll finish in four minutes maybe if you want. Yeah, please, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, so shall I go ahead with my second presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just Take coming time. to you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, prep. I'll uh, very quickly run through Dr. Maniar. Please. Propounded by Cohen in 2012. It came in a wonderful article in uh, New England Journal of Medicine in the year 2012. We all attended that wonderful meeting internationally in Europe when Cohen presented his data and the hall was totally packed. And the types of PrEP available are oral PrEP, long-acting long injectable cabotegravir, and dapivirin vaginal ring. For our Indian doctors, for our Indian clinical scenario, if we remember these three or four points, oral PrEP is available, long-acting injectable cabotegravir is on the horizon, dapivirin vaginal ring may act as an additional factor. TDF-based versus TAP-based we have to decide based on the gender, type of sexual exposure, age of the patient, whether we want to give it to the patient on a daily or an event-based, and whether we are going to give it in a specific population like a uh, couple where there is one who is positive and the other who is negative. Clinical approach, one has to document a HIV negative test in the prospective recipient. This is the rule of thumb. And also Hep B, Hep C, we need to test. And before giving TDF, we need to see that the renal function is all right. And this is, these are the CDC guidelines. I just want you to concentrate on the second line from the top, HIV positive partner or not, one or more sex partners or not, had bacterial SA, STI or not. Quickly jump to the bottom line, prescribe PrEP in the deep green there. In most of the instances, we need to prescribe PrEP. And PrEP should be given to all HIV negative men who have sex with men or transgender individuals, ESCS guidelines. Again, WHO has initiated PrEP guidelines in 2016, 17 updated, then updated guidelines there. PrEP options, mostly in Indian scenario, FTC TDF or FTC TAF. If we see this study in the clinical trials, let us see the DISCOV trial clearly shows the superiority of FTC TAF over FTC TDF. The Number of incident infections are less and safety profile also is better. And discover safety at week 96 clearly says this. And HPTN 083 deals with cabotegravir prep in MSM and TGW, transgender women. And that's what clearly shows a superiority, but it's not yet available in India. So in summary, these are the prep eligibility guidelines, whether they're FDA approved or not. This is there in the CCO slide set. All of you can guideline. In the interest of time, I'm going to uh, stop forth now. And before stopping, you need to know that there's a tail of period of seven to 10 days. So based on the sexual practice of the patient and patient's history, we need to tail off and stop the PrEP uh, accordingly. So, and of course, counseling and others in aged uh, persons, these are the PrEP guidelines. I'm quickly running through. Uh, this is the safety trial of DISCOVER trial. And we need to, Take these three system level, individual level, and community level guidelines in mind and additional considerations in more than 50. In summary, oral prep or cabotegravir once in two months injection, dapivirin vaginal ring, and of course, condom usage in the case of MSM. And frequent HIV-1 RNA for a relatively new breaking infection. Thank you for the opportunity given. Thanks, Dr. Manier and the panel and Bumesh and panel. Thank, Thank you. Very Thank you, Ravi. I, I just like to ask Dr. Ragini any quick comment. Dr. Ragini, please. Dr. Ragini Malhotra. Stop screen. Thank you, Dr. Maniar. And thank Would you. Would you like Dr. to have any comment? 
yes yes uh, my my i would like to say that uh, we are treating the uh, people with hiv and we have to focus and it's very important to focus on the treatment of the women population and also it's our responsibility to protect the next generation so when when a woman is uh, comes with pregnancy then we have to do certain uh, precautions and certain uh, tests and certain treatment to her just to protect herself and her offspring so as soon as the patient comes a woman comes with pregnancy we one has to uh, test for hiv for hiv 1 and hiv 2 for her and as soon as the result comes positive then we have to start art in instantaneously without going in for cd4 count and without going in for any other test we have to start with hrt art for that woman and then at, at around the period of 34 to 36 weeks of pregnancy till delivery any time whichever is possible earlier we have to do viral load on her it has been found that the doing the viral load knowing the viral load becomes the most important parameter to uh, to identify the high risk group of the women who are uh, capable of transmitting the infection to the offspring and those who put their offsprings on at a higher risk group so the viral load should be less than 1000 per milliliter per ml and then one has to go in for the proper art after delivery, the baby has to receive, the neonate has to receive the, the prophylaxis, AR prophylaxis in the form of nivirapine and in high risk group, nivirapine and zidobidine both. And for that is for six weeks for all HIV positive women who are having ART. But those who have not received ART within four weeks of delivery has to have the prophylaxis for double the time, that is for 12 weeks. And those who, those who, the, the infants of those women who are at high risk group and the mother is breastfeeding, those have to extend the prophylactic dose for at least six months for nevirapine and zidobidine. So that is how we get into uh, the prevention of transmission to the offspring. And uh, what we used to believe earlier that the membrane rupture and premature delivery and all these factors are contributing to uh, the transmission but that is no more uh, valid now it is only the viral load which will decide the uh, higher risk to the mother and the baby and which will need the further prophylactic treatment thank you dr ragini can we have dr aruna chalam to say something uh, yes sir uh, can i can you hear me sir dr yes. aruna chalam would you like to say something yes sir can you hear me sir please proceed Ah, yes. So, I want to share three things here. Number one is um, in government program, we are giving a T2G and yeah. CDF and FDC, uh, three TCS, uh, FDC drugs for the first line to put puppy. In case of failure, we are using protease inhibitors like uh, atosinatinavir or uh, dinavitinavir. So, we have three levels of therapy, but one thing is a research for limited setting. We don't have the viral uh, resistant testing, sensitivity and resistance pattern is not available there. So based on virological failure and clinical failure or immunological failure, we are switching the regimen to the three level of therapy. This is the first information. Second one is, uh, rightly said, U, U is equal to U. But uh, in our program, even though viral suppress level, we are encouraging discarded couples to uh, continue the safe sex practices using the condoms, we are encouraging them. Because we don't know that uh, fluctuating viral load may be there. We are doing the viral load annually once uh, viral load in case of STD or any, any other infection may cause fluctuate, increasing the uh, chance of transmission. So still, uh, use code is not always possible. You start, rightly, you said that Dr. Mani has said uh, that transmission still is happening uh, due to uh, second thing. Thanks. Third one is final one. Uh, Preventive therapy. We are using isoniazid acid for six months for all PLHV, but I advise to all the private practitioners also to use the IPT in the isoniazid acid preventive therapy for six months therapy, 300 million OD for patients. It will be beneficial for, you know, that I already said it's the number one killer is TB. So we, TB is preventable by isoniazid acid preventive therapy. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Can I have Dr. Deepak to say something? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Maniar. Sir, Dr. Saple, sir, Dr. Bhumesh, can you hear me? 
Yes. Yes. Sure. Sir, uh, you see the right. Uh, right. We are um, right now witnessing the decline of new cases, but uh, same time, uh, and we are succeed uh, in uh, suppressing viral load and virus infection. But at same time, uh, the patient, all those are um, on ART, they have to take this uh, medication for life long. The now concern, right now, our concern is the, the, the I mean, the patient on ART with comorbidities. Even the patient, uh, we can see in um, HIV practice, there are a lot of patients who, who have cardiovascular disease or metabolic disorder, diabetic, renal disorder, and even malignancies. So I think our focus will change in uh, coming years to how to prevent and how to prevent the comorbidity with uh, the patient who are living with HIV infection. That will be the our you. focus. Next. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Saple, you, uh, you said something about your last case. There's something like dual infection, HIV-1 and HIV-2 infection. Rare, but it's a very, very important uh, diagnosis. Uh, some of you are doing I mean, I, HIV-1 viral load is uh, undetectable and the uh, patient is doing well, but uh, the CD4 count is falling down. I think one should look for a dual infection. Number two, infantile, uh, Dr. Ragini forgot to mention about breastfeeding. Uh, regarding the breastfeeding, it should be uh, total breastfeeding and no top feeding mixed up. Infantile diagnosis is also very important. Uh, within 72 hours, after six weeks, uh, we must do DNA PCR. Uh, that to me also looks uh, very important. And thirdly, Dr. Rakesh, nowadays we don't do sperm washing at all. If at all you want to be very sure, the Metropolis lab does semen viral load for HIV-1. Dr. Sapley knows about it. If your viral load is undetectable, don't waste your time in sperm washing. Let's have a natural sex. I'm a promoter of uh, condomless sex. I'm sure Dr. Murugan will get upset about it. People are talking all over the world, pre-exposure prophylaxis and condomless sex and treat SOS STD. Thank you from my side and uh, thank you for the panelists. Thank you, Dr. Bumesh. Dr. Murugan, and my friend, Dr. Narsiwara Nata, and of course, uh, Dr. Vikran Saoji. Thank you all. One question, Dr. Maniya, please. Yes, that sir. Regarding the, the weight um, increasing about the TDF, do you want to switch over to some other thing? Or, how can, how can we prevent uh, that weight? I, 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 I will, I'll explain it in a minute. If you have weight gain and no metabolic syndrome, such as lipid level, insulin level, calcium level, and uh, they are or creatinine is okay. <clears throat> then I ask on exercise and, uh, and uh, diet. If still this is not working, very important. If this is not still working, I switch over to TDF. If at all, uh, is, 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 there is no kidney function problem. It's not that simple. That's what I'm saying. The more the newer drugs, what is the challenging problem today with Dr. Sapley would agree with me, and you, of course, sir, the DTG, TAF, and 3TC combination, we have to be very careful. Most 80% of my patients who are on this combination, they develop weight gain. And it's very embarrassing, especially female. Oh, they get upset like anything and don't want to give up. Would you like, huh, I have an answer. Go over to DTG, 3TC combination, the two drug combination. In try for next three months and make sure the viral load is not upset. So this is, it's not that easy, sir. What you're talking is challenging. I'm sure the audience here who is treating HIV patient will agree with me, it's not simple. It's just not simple. Because all this weight gain eventually will lead into the metabolic syndrome and the damage to the brain, kidney, and heart, of course. So what you're talking, I would certainly agree with you. Lastly, but not the least, how often we do viral uh, resistance test? In whole year, I've not done a single patient viral resistance test. You have a sequences of treatment. You know what treatment to be given if the, see, there's no point in doing it unless until the patient is adherent. If the patient is keep on taking adherent, hold on, hold on, hold on, Dr. Sapley. Let me finish. Uh, if the patient is not adherent, no point in wasting your time, money for resistance testing. It's very simple. If you have a patient who is failing, Give boosted dolgravir. Uh, do give do, uh, I mean uh, uh, darunavir boosted plus dolgravir. 
and see whether your patient is prone. I use Maraviral, three drugs. If a patient is a very uh, heavy failure, if it doesn't work, what is the role of viral load, a viral resistance study? It's very difficult to interpret. And what are the drugs you have an option available? So this is my opinion. Yeah, yeah Dr. Sapna. Yeah, ma, thank you for that, Dr. Murugan. Yes. That weight gain is almost 10% of patients on DTG, they are getting weight. Uh, and as Dr. Maniar said, exercise, food control, that definitely help. But then, you know, we, we shifted about 100 patients on Bictagravir mm. who had a, a weight gain due to DTG. And that paper has been accepted for publication. After shifting to Bictagravir, they have lost weight. And this paper has accepted our publication. It will be ready. So please try to shifting to Victor Gravi. Victor Gravi okay. is better. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Thank you, Bhumesh. Anyone else? Anything? Dr. Thank Bhumesh? You. Dr. Burgan, okay. sir, you take over, sir. Over to chairpersons, please. Dr. Venkateshwaran, please. Vikram, sir. sir. Dr. Vikram, sir, sir, yours. Is Dr. Venkateshwaran there? No. Sir, no, sir. You can proceed with it, sir. Okay. I yes, think, uh, yes, uh, with this, we Thank you, to the, come to the end of this uh, session. I think very enlightening. All those uh, experienced uh, people in the field of HIV, they have shared their views. And I, I feel that it's very useful and uh, will be beneficial for all those, even the postgraduate student who intend to be pursuing the interest in HIV medicine. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Bhumesh and all the Dr. Murgan and uh, other uh, members. So thank you. It was uh, nice to uh, share this important session. Thank you. Over to the Peace Master, please. Madam Shah Ashwini. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you, sir. A very good evening to all the de delegates of uh, ASTINA 2022 and many thanks uh, to the organizers for uh, interesting me with this opportunity. I will first brief everybody with the instructions of the quiz. So there will be 10 MCQ questions out of which all the questions have to be answered and uh, only one correct answer should be marked within a duration of five minutes. There will be two toppers from each PGs and two toppers from SRs. I now request the technical team to release the question key. Now, meanwhile, I'll invite Dr. Mohan Kumar, our private secretary, to deliver something about the genital health and sexual health. Please, Dr. Mohan Kumar, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir I will take this. Deepak. Yes, I'm audible, sir. Yes, you are audible, yes, sir. Yes, sir. On behalf of our ISTD, my sincere thanks and to all our faculty members on this seminar for the seminar. So it's a brainchild of our beloved. Mohan, you are not audible now. Yes, sir. Wait, sir. No audible, sir? Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The slides are not moving. I request. Uh, Srinivas to move my slides. Srinivas is there? Sir, control from your side only, sir. Yes, sir. I, I will just stop sharing now. New share. Yeah. Okay. It's not moving here. Are you having my PPT there? No, sir. No. It's, wait. Sir, please can press down button. Yes, sir. yes, yes, sir. It's, it's a brain chilled up. Our beloved uh, President Pumeshar is uh, at present. He had that International Gandhi Award for Liberacy by our uh, Vice President of India. 
it's a honor for us. Our religion has had that International Gandhi Award for Leprosy in this year. The Sasna is brainchild of our Bhumesh sir, our Bhushan sir's guidance. We are doing it. So basically, the Sasna is to empower the sexual and reproductive health awareness among our community to the welfare of our social society throughout the country and the world. So the last uh, latest uh, CDC's uh, delegates, more than one in five peoples are having STA infections. It's almost 16 billion uh, cost to the STA community, 26 million of new STAs in the past years. At present, the hybridized B, HIV, and HSV incidents are more. The new bacterial infections like chlamydia and trichomonas is also increasing. The incidence also increasing now. On these occasions, the ST Awareness Weeks also is there in the US. April 10th to 16th, they are doing so many activities there. So basically, the sexual health is dealt with physical, emotional, and well being. It requires a positive and respectable approach to the sexuality and sexual relationships. And it has to be attained and maintained the sexual rights of all the persons to be respected and protected and fulfilled. So during the discussion of today's topic, we detailed the entire uh, STA and HIV, the more focus on partners, practices, uh, possibility of STA infection productions and pregnancy as yes, the routine STA infections. The, now, the pleasure promotion pride, the sixth, the sixth plus is added by the National Coalition of Sexual Health to address the pleasure problems and pride. So now our focus would be something regarding the sexual satisfaction, functioning, concerns, and support for the one's gender identity and sexual orientation also. So overall, the sexual health in a holistic view, it is not about just well-being. It, it is not about merely absence of the disease. It involves respect, safety, and freedom from the discrimination and violence. It depends upon the fulfillment of human rights. It is relevant throughout the individual lifespan, not from the years of middle age or old age or entire age. It expressed through the diverse sexuality and forms of sexual expressions. It is influenced by the gender norms, roles, expectations, and power dynamics. It needs to be understood within specific social, economic, and political context. So we also we focus one in two of the sexually active people can get an STA infection by the age of 25. If yes, they are sexually active, we have to test it. So we have to talk regarding their STA history and test them and treat them. By this, we can have the healthy genitalia, healthy skin, mind, and body, healthy nation in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Mohan Kumar. Yes, sir. Thank you. At this juncture, I will take this opportunity to request all the faculties and senior residents and juniors who are not yet become the members of IAS study just to, uh, kindly become IAS study members. And we are having our national conference, ASTICON, during September 9th, 10th, 11th. And registration already started. Please enroll yourself and register yourself and please attend. And, and now I request uh, the Kiss Master to go ahead. Unmute yourself. Sorry. Uh, I would please uh, request the technical team to release the question and answer. So, the first question, which ELISA test would you advise? The answer is D, option D, fourth generation. In a newborn, which test would you like to advise? The second question, the answer is D, both ELISA for HIV and PCR. Third question, which is the test of choice to differentiate between HIV 1 and 2? The answer is C, Western blot. Question number four, in child, in children, after what age will ELISA test be enough for diagnosis? The option is C, after 18 months. Question number five, in which condition HIV test is not necessary? The answer is D, 
diabetes mellitus question number 6 a patient on arv regular with follow ups and test reports to you after latest cd4 report of 180 the last one 6 months ago was 400 what will be your next step the answer is option d ask to continue same and repeat test after a month question number 7 patient on dolutegranavir plus taf plus ftc comes back happy and thank you for the gain in weight what will you do the option is d change the regimen patient of azt plus 3tc plus efe comes with buffalo hum what will you do change it change the regimen to dgt tdf plus 3tc question number 9 zero discordant couple husband positive wants to have a child what would you advise the option is the correct answer is c sperm washing or artificial insemination with donor and try with prep in the last question a, pers- a patient on tle has symptoms of crf what would you suggest switch to dg dtg abc plus t3 so i would like to uh, uh, i would like to ask the technical team to release the results so the winners are dr yashasri dangarwal from usmania medical college and dr deepa varshini p from mmc these are from the pgs hearty congratulations to the winners and their respective professors and hods what about senior residents how about the senior residents please display no, the results sir. no sir only pg is only attempt sir. okay okay sir. congratulations to the winners now shall i call dr mohan kumar to give the word of thanks yes sir sir on behalf of our association i sincere thanks to our senior uh, professors who are participated in this astiga astinar 4 my humble thanks to our chairpersons and our senior moderators and all the faculty members who were attended the almost two hours full of academic we went we just went through the hiv both academically and clinically and technical aspects from the legends of the country thank you one and all see you in the forthcoming asnar and astikan 2020 2022 hyderabad thank you sir thank you thank you for the technical team and the uh, sponsor hetero healthcare thank you very much thank you sir thank you seniors thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you one and all for the participation sir right like, like. thank you and the membership form is released in the astinar faculty whatsapp group yes sir yes. thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you srinivas